One of the most underrated and overlooked parts of a car are its tires. A good set of tires can completely change how a vehicle drives, while a bad set of tires could have dire consequences. Let's take an in-depth look at where they came from and why tires are the way that they are. Get a few basics out of the way. The name tire is an abbreviated form of a tire, meaning to dress, because a wheel fitted with a tire was considered a fully dressed wheel. The British spell it with a Y, T Y R E, and all I could find was that it was a slang version that caught on and has no practical reasoning. You Brits are something else. The concept of tires has been around since the invention of the wheel. Rough roads take a toll on wheels, and so an outside layer was applied that could be easily changed to preserve the integrity of the wheel itself. These ancient tires were often made out of leather or steel. This worked, but the wheels rode incredibly rough. Rubber was originally never used for these tires because of its loose structure, but that would soon change thanks to a man named Charles Goodyear. Charles Goodyear developed a method called vulcanization in 1839. Vulcanization was the process of combining rubber and sulfur in the presence of a heat source, which made the rubber very rigid and able to hold a solid shape once it cooled off. With the help of Nathaniel Hayward, the two received patent 1090 on February 24th, 1839. However, they had no idea what this process would be used for. The Goodyear Tire Company is only named after Charles Goodyear and his discovery, since he passed away 38 years before the company was even founded. Soon after vulcanization was discovered, tires began to be made out of solid rubber. No air, just thick, thick globs of rubber baby. This was a tremendous improvement over the leather and metal tires used in the past, but they still had a harsh ride. In 1847, a Scottish engineer named Robert W. Thompson patented an air-filled tire. However, it actually never went into production. It wasn't until 1888 that another Scottish gentleman successfully put an air-filled tire into production. That man was named John Boyd Dunlop. Dunlop was actually a businessman and only got into the tire business after his son complained about the harsh ride on his bicycle. At the time, tires were still white due to the natural color of rubber as it comes off the tree. This we'll touch on later. The early 1900s saw the development of bias ply tires, a way of constructing tires that consisted of two pieces, the outside tread and an inflatable inner tube. This practice is still used for bicycle tires to this day if you want something to reference. During the Great War, alternative rubbers had to be produced because most rubber trees were found in enemy-occupied countries. One of the main ingredients of these synthetic rubbers was carbon, which when mixed into the rubber, turns the entire batch black. Since then, our tires have always been black. However, white walls were still fashionable as a more regal and elegant way of preserving the past as a throwback to when tires were actually white. During World War II, a French company by the name of Michelin began experimenting with a tire design that was patented in 1914. It was a tubeless tire that had never been put into production, but after the war ended, Ended, the Michelin company was ready to unveil their new design, putting it on the 1948 Citroen 2CV. Michelin actually owned the Citroen company at the time, so they could put their new product in place almost immediately. Michelin, we put America on radios. This revolutionized tires forever, offering a smoother ride, better fuel economy, and ease of repair. The world accepted this new design pretty quickly throughout the 1950s and 60s, except for us Americans. We were hesitant, waiting all the way until 1970 to offer a car with factory installed radials, the 1970 Lincoln Continental Mark III. Radials soon became favorable during the fuel crisis, helping Americans get better fuel economy during shortages. Dedicated snow tires became widely available in the 1950s, being first offered by Goodyear in 1952 and Michelin in 1972. Winter tires were invented in 1934 in Finland, but never took off outside of the Scandinavian region. Uniform tire quality grading was introduced in 1978 by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, federally requiring treadwear ratings on all tires as well as tire codes 
distinguishing their size and build date on the tire, making non-DOT approved tires illegal to use on the roads. This could be because of how they were constructed, their speed rating, or their date of manufacture. In 2021, the UK actually banned the use of tires over the age of 10 on public roads, something I actually personally believe in. Dedicated snow tires are not required to show tread wear. Since the 1980s, tires have remained mostly the same. There has always been innovations on how to make them with better materials, get better fuel economy, and make them safer. So, next time you take a drive, you have sulfur and vulcanization to thank for your peaceful ride. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to my newest video essay here on the channel. I put out a new video essay every single month on the 20th. So no matter the day of the week, the 20th of each month, you guys will be getting a new video essay. If you have a topic that you'd like me to cover in one of these video essays, something you're curious about or want to see talked about, please leave it in the comment section down below. But I'll catch you in the next one. Take care, guys.